And please forgive me for taking it out of the context of the service where it belongs. But I wanted to say a few words about this. That's Psalm 51, as you know, and it was written by King David. David played the harp all his life, and he would write songs about what was going on with him and what God had done for him. And if you recall, shortly after David became king, he lusted after Bathsheba, he committed adultery with her, and then he committed murder when he set up her husband Uriah to die in battle. And God sent his prophet Nathan to confront David and to speak his word to David. He warned David of the coming punishment for his great sin, that the son that Bathsheba bore to him would die. And in his grief and in his sorrow over sin, David sang this song. He said, God, I am a sinner. Forgive me. Make me clean again. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me, but restore to me the joy of your salvation. David believed in God. He believed that God would forgive him his sin. He also believed that the Holy Spirit was at work in him. I find that amazing. And indeed, the Holy Spirit was at work in him. Even after that horrible sin, the Holy Spirit did not leave him. Because Psalm 51 is a holy scripture to us. Which means we believe that David wrote it under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? So God did not take his Holy Spirit from David. The Holy Spirit was at work in his heart, restoring him, purifying him. He was also at work in David's music. Now, I love music also. Music brings me joy. And I'm confident that the Holy Spirit works in each of us through the music that we make together as God's people. It's one of the ways that he comforts us as our great comforter. He gives us peace to walk the challenging road that we have before us as we follow Christ. Music comforts me as I learn to be a pastor. I'm supposed to write sermons and teach Bible studies that teach the faith and that encourage people. But a lot of the time, I find the process kind of draining. I love teaching. I love preaching. I love learning about the Bible, but sometimes it's draining. Sometimes I just find myself beating my head against the wall, trying to figure out what I should say and how I should say it. But music brings me joy because I can sing a hymn or a biblical canticle without, you know, struggling, digging around for the right words to say. They're already in here. The word of God is already up here and in here. The word of God is there set to music. See, music is more powerful than we realize all the time. In the hands of God's people, music is a tool of the Holy Spirit to pour the word of God into our hearts. I think singing, singing a hymn is like getting a mini sermon. And it's not a boring sermon. You don't have to try and try to pay attention. It's, it's warm and it's living. The rhythm and the harmony and the melody with the word of God, they, they enter you and they, they make you a part of the text. They make the text a part of you and they bind you together with the Christians that you're singing with. And they unite you with the Christians of all ages. This is all, of course, by the grace of the Holy Spirit. We know, unfortunately, that music can be used to, to very evil purposes as well as good. And that's why we train our young people. That's why we teach them to sing. That's why we teach them the faith. It's why we pay musicians who understand their craft, people who can write new hymns, who can, who can compose new music to set the word to. As God's people, we go to great lengths to ensure that the music we make together serves the work of the Holy Spirit as he's working faith in our hearts. And that's why I'm here with you all today 
I'm here as a vicar and a student learning how to be a pastor, but I'm also here as a musician of Christ's church. The Lutheran Church Missouri Synod is sending me to teach music in the church in Sri Lanka. Our brothers and sisters on the other side of the world in the Ceylon Evangelical Lutheran Church are looking for us in the LCMS for guidance as they walk together following Christ. So by, God, by God's grace, I will guide the musicians there as they seek to bring God's word to their people through music and serve the work of the Holy Spirit. Isn't it amazing how the Holy Spirit works in so many places with si such diverse people and languages and cultures? In many places in the world, God is working through music that would sound totally bizarre to our ears. So I pray that whatever their Indian music sounds like to our ears, God would enable musicians in Sri Lanka to uplift and encourage the Christians there as they follow Christ. I pray that the Holy Spirit would use musicians to bring God's word to their ears and the joy of the gospel to their hearts. Would you sing another song with me at this time? Um, turn with me to page 199 now, in the same service now, the Song of Simeon, page 199. That's the song of Simeon. The Holy Spirit was at work in Simeon also. The Holy, the Holy Spirit had revealed to him that he would not die before he saw the Lord's Christ. And so on the day that Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to present him at the temple, the Holy Spirit brought Simeon also to the temple and showed him the Christ. And he held up Jesus and he sang the song that we just sang. It was a song of thanksgiving to God, that God had allowed him to see the salvation of the world. And dear friends, God has shown you Christ also. That's why we continue to sing the song of Simeon 2,000 years later. The Holy Spirit fills each of you. He brings you to this sanctuary where you see God through the eyes of faith given by the Holy Spirit you hear not just ordinary words, but divine words, the word of God. Through the faith given you by the Holy Spirit, you taste not just ordinary food and drink, but divine food and drink. You see not just ordinary people sitting around you, you see a divine body, you see Christ's body. The Holy Spirit reveals God to you here in this congregation. Therefore, I leave you with these words of encouragement to sing. Sing all that God has done for you. Sing how he has revealed himself to you. Sing how he created all things. Sing his mercy when we fell into sin. Sing his wisdom to send a savior into our human race. Sing his love to sacrifice his own son for our salvation. 
sing his son's victory over death. Sing of Christ and his beloved, the church. Sing in the hope of the glory that's to come. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and be filled with the Holy Spirit. There are some strong singers out here. Keep it up. When people around you hear you singing, it encourages them and uplifts them. And that's the the Holy Spirit at work in you, encouraging each other. And if you don't feel very confident with your voice, sing out anyway. A joyful noise is just as joyful whether it's off key or on key. And the more you sing, I think, the more you will enjoy it. So parents, sing kids, sing hymns with your kids at home. Hymns are easy. They're, they're simple, they rhyme, and there's, a, there's just a sweet spot with kids where they'll just be willing to sing anything. And so, so sing hymns with them. Have them singing the faith. And they'll sing those their whole lives. Little children, you know that you put smiles on, pe- on people's faces when you sing out in church. It's, it's so beautiful. It's like hearing angels sing when little kids are singing out. So keep up the good work, you all. Don't stop singing. Never stop singing. And as you sing, be encouraged because God's people have been singing these words for thousands of years. When you sing the Magnificat and the Song of Simeon and the Kyrie and the Sanctus, the Holy, and the Psalms, you're singing songs sung by angels in heaven and by saints and by prophets and by martyrs and no doubt by loved ones who have passed away. So join them and sing. And that's not to leave out you instrumentalists either. If you play an instrument, play it. Practice it. Play it. Talk to Steve. Say, hey, I play this instrument. I want to play in church. Because not only do instruments help the people know what to sing, they also just bring joy. What an amazing thing to hear a trumpet singing over the organ and everyone's voices. Or a a soft flute playing along with a quiet verse. What a gift. Psalm 150, I'll close with this. Psalm 150 says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding symbols. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Stotiram, as they say in Sri Lanka. Praise the Lord. In his name. Amen. Amen.